Hey everyone, welcome to the Rise Podcast. I'm your host, Josh, and this is episode eight. It's going to be about the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So Jesus came to serve us. He did not come to be served. Um, He came to teach us his ways, to guide us, to comfort us, heal us, and ultimately save us. God went through desperate lengths to save and rescue us from sin and our own destruction. He sent Jesus to be the living sacrifice and paid the ultimate price by shedding his blood so we wouldn't have to. So we wouldn't have to face the ultimate consequence of sin, which is death and basically health for eternity. Uh, He sent Jesus to live as a man, so he literally felt what we all feel every day. He conquered sin and death by living a sinless life. He sent Jesus so we can be reconciled with God and be his children, since sin separated us from God. When Adam and Eve first sinned, that's what happened. So God, realistically, he doesn't need us or need anything since he is everything. He lacks absolutely nothing. But he loves us so much that he chose to send Jesus to go through the torture and hell so we wouldn't have to. It's a love that the world doesn't live by or teach. It has nothing to do with common logic or anything like that. It transcends human logic and understanding. So ask yourself, how basically how you came to be because we didn't make ourselves you know there's no such thing as nothing creating everything every creation has a creator every thing that exists something or someone created that so we wouldn't be here have nothing at all if it weren't for god breathing life into us basically if you believe in jesus his life his death and resurrection you will go to heaven and you will live eternally with him that's his promise. So if you accept that truth and Jesus into your heart, you'll live forever, literally. When your body dies on earth, your spirit will live on forever with God. So that's God's promise to us. He always keeps his promises no matter what. So everything that we go through, and that's current and significant today, God knows exactly how you feel. And specifically, Jesus knows exactly how you feel when it comes to your hardship and and, and your struggles. Because when God sent Jesus to earth, he literally lived as a man. So, I mean, he felt what we felt as human beings. Attacked, he has felt ridiculed, offended, laughed at. He's experienced it all. He's not a God on a throne looking down on us not understanding what we go through and what it is to be mortal. Um, he knows exactly what it feels like. He, he lived it himself, but he lived the worst pain and torture that you can ever, that you can't even imagine. The movie, The Passion of the Christ, the one that Mel Gibson made, that's an amazing depiction of it, but that still doesn't do true justice. You know, I mean, Mel Gibson, he did a really good job, you know, showing Jesus's life, to the, uh, him teaching the gospel and him walking in faith and teaching the, his disciples about him, about the truth, and also about uh, his plan eventually, which is why he came and um, him saving us. So he did an amazing job in that movie. Anybody that, that hasn't seen that movie, it came out in like 2004, I highly recommend that you watch it because, I mean, I don't know about you, but me, I prefer watching something or watching um, something to get a better experience of it. Although I don't mind reading about a story, when you watch it, it's a completely different experience. I mean, it, it, breaks, it breaks me every time. It's very hard to watch, but I think it's important that we see it and, and watch that movie to understand what Jesus went through, what, God, what God's mission was. And how he saved us all from ourselves and from sin, which ends up being to to death. Because the product of sin is death. There's no going around it except through Jesus. So I highly recommend that. Anyone that is curious or has never watched that movie, it's powerful. It's heartbreaking. It's empowering. It's a little scary, too, uh, in, 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 in certain aspects of it. But it shows the passion that God had, and also the compassion, the fierce love that he has for us, and him completing his mission at all costs. 
no matter what. An, an unconditional love that shows on screen when you watch that movie. Um, I watch it once in a while just to honor and, and experience that and, and also remember and never forget what God did for us when he didn't have to. God is everything and he will never need anything or anyone. He's God. He is almighty. He has everything. He lacks nothing, like I said. He, so the fact that he, he did that, he came as a man and was birthed through Mary supernaturally um, and, and lived as a man and preached the gospel and came to complete his mission, which is serving us, revealing himself to us, and also dying for us so we wouldn't have to pay that price. So we wouldn't have to spend eternity in hell because of our sins. That is the consequence. Just like there's a law here on earth and you can't break certain laws or else you'll go to jail or prison. It's the same thing. If you break certain laws in the spiritual realm and break God's law, the penalty is death. And that's because God is fair. And since it's almost impossible, it's basically impossible to keep to, to basically not sin. It's, it's not possible. And the only one that, that was able to accomplish um, a sinless life is what was Jesus. It sucks to realize and see how things become irrelevant and insignificant and forgotten and in the past. Um, for Easter service yesterday, um, it was a really good message. And basically, in a nutshell, they were focusing on, man, like there's a lot of things that are trending and then they go away and then they come back. People forget about things. Specifically, they forget about Jesus. They forget about who he is, who he was. And the fact that he's living today, he wasn't just something of the past. He is significant from the past, the present, and also the future. He is never ending. And it's sad to see how he, be, he just becomes something that people just don't want to even look at or talk about anymore. Or like, for example, when people, I, I had an old friend where uh, the topic of sex came up and sex before marriage. And he looked at me and he was just like, man, he was like, that's not applied. That basically doesn't apply anymore, man. You're living in the past. And I was like, wait, well, that's the problem. Why are we, why are we not honoring our past? Why are we not honoring the principles that make us, make us who we are? We, we basically lose ourselves in the trends and in what's current and what's popular and what's not. Like, it's okay to wait for, um, for marriage before sex, or it's okay to wait until uh, getting married to move out with your significant other. Why is that just, for, like, disregarded and forgotten? You know what I mean? So, Jesus, he lived, he died the most horrific death, and it was a slow, painful, humiliating death. And he didn't do it for show. He didn't do it for himself he did it for you he did it for me so our sin wouldn't result in us going to hell because hell it's not as if god created hell with his own bare hands and with his own mind hell is a place for all the fallen angels and satan hell is not for us but we choose that out of our actions we choose to reject god and not have anything to do with him because we want our own way and when we do that, when we reject his truth and his goodness, and we live our life in the fast lane, living life the way we want, and thinking that we're self-sufficient, we're going to end up in a place where we are going to basically be in horror. I mean, it's sad, and it's, and, but it's very real. And, and people think it's a joke or a fantasy or a fairy tale or, or just a made-up story just like the others. No, no, no. If you look up a testimony from a pastor, I don't remember his name, but if you look up on YouTube, 11 Minutes in Hell, it's very intense. I, I warn you, it's very intense because he is actually someone uh, that God used and God allowed him to experience hell, literally. His, like, God allowed it so he can be a testimony for everyone to testify that God, or that, that hell is real and that, not to put fear in people, but also... Uh, just to give them awareness of the reality, the, the horrific reality that if you don't choose God, if you reject him, if you want nothing to do with him, if you want to live your life the way you want to live it and reject God 
to the point where you you end up passing away rather at old age or or out of nowhere then you go to another place your your body dies here but your spirit goes on your spirit does not die it goes on to the afterlife to eternal life or rather in heaven by accepting Jesus into your heart and 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 basically making him lord of your life or you go to hell for eternity like there there's no there's no take backs. There, there's no going back. You can't be like, oh, all right, God, you know what? This place is horrible. I want out. It, it's, it's done. It's done. So, and I heard this also um, from another church I used to go to. It was a really awesome pastor. And he was talking about what, what, what happens if, you know, you listen to this message and you're just like, oh, I mean, I, I guess, whatever, you know, like how, how can it be real? It sounds too too crazy to be true what happens when after you listen to this message and this isn't to condemn this isn't to put fear into you but things life happens you know you never know when your time is up so what happens when you you know walk outside you get in your car you start you just drive to the store and you get t-boned and killed instantly and it's too late to make a, a decision to to find jesus to learn about who he is and and to follow him and choose him instead of choosing your selfish ways because our ways aren't always right life then the best version of life only god knows because he created life he created you to live the best life and when we try to do our own way and live our own way we mess it all up and we try to and, and we think we have a better idea or a better version of life but in reality God is the one that knows your plan and your true potential. So keep that in mind, you know? That pastor that experienced hell, he goes through the stages of what he saw, what he heard, what he smelled. He walks you through the experience, and it is horrific. That's not even a word to justify. It is frightening. It is horrifying. And I don't recommend like people that are sensitive to that topic to, to listen to it or watch it on YouTube. It's 11 minutes in hell. But if you really are, are skeptical and, and you're just like, you know what, this doesn't exist, listen to his testimony on YouTube and you'll see what I'm talking about. This is a real place for people that, or it's not for people, but it's for the, uh, the fallen angels, the ones that betrayed God in the beginning and want nothing to do with him and Satan. But that's for, that's a place for them to live and to be in anguish away from God. Hell is a place that God separated himself from. So everything that God isn't is in that place. It's the opposite. So when you think about God, he's beautiful, he's amazing, he's perfect, he's he's loving, he's kind, he's wise, he's compassionate, he's you know, peaceful, you know, comforting, all those wonderful things. Imagine the extreme opposite. That's hell. So the reason why I created this podcast in the first place is to stop living for myself and stop doing things that benefit me all the time and start talking about God, start sharing with people about God and the truth because God, he loves you. This isn't cliche or this isn't a fairy tale. This is real. Jesus actually came supernaturally through Mary and he lived as a man. He gave his life for us because he started preaching the truth and everybody didn't like it, especially the Jews. So they put him to death and he, and he already knew that was going to happen because that was his mission in the first place. God, the father, he led him the whole entire way until his mission was finished. It was complete. Once he died, once he defeated sin by living a sinless life, that's when he liberated us. That's when he saved us. So instead of us following the old law, we became free by his blood because he paid the price. So all we need to do is believe in him, trust in him, accept Jesus into our heart, and, we, and, and it's that simple. We don't have to do amazing things or be a good person, quotation marks, none of that crap. That's all BS that the world teaches. Oh, you got to be, uh, you got to put in your part and then you'll, you'll be worthy. That's BS, major BS. The truth is, is that you come as you are. I don't care if you're a prostitute, a drug dealer, a freaking devil worshiper. I don't care where you come from. You are worthy of God's love and God's saving. 
and God's grace and his peace. So don't let the world twist things around and, and making you feel like you're not worthy or, oh, I've done, I've done too much evil. I'm f- too far gone. That's a lie. You stand up, you start fresh and say, God, this is, who, this is my name. This is where, I'm at, where I am. This is what I've done, which you know. Please liberate me. I want to know you. Open up my heart. I allow you, Jesus, to come into my heart because I need you and I'm not enough. My life, my, my version of life is not enough. So I choose to just stand down, yield, and accept you into my heart. And your life will completely change and he'll start to guide you into the right path, a good path for your life. And I'm not talking about a path of perfection because that's also a, a, a misleading lie that you have to live a perfect life. Only Jesus lived a perfect life. So if you accept him into your heart and yield, he'll guide you into a path, not of perfection, but of peace, of mercy, of compassion, and of wisdom. So he can teach you how to live, teach you how to treat, how to treat yourself and love yourself by receiving his love, and then you can love others the way he loves you. So I, I just wanted to share that with you guys, and I just wanted to let you guys know you're loved. Jesus came and paid the price. He shed his blood literally so you wouldn't have to, so you wouldn't have to spend an eternity in a filthy, ugly, horrific place for eternity. He came so you can be forgiven, so you're not justified by your sins, but instead you are adopted into his kingdom as a child of God, as a son or a daughter of God, and not of the world. So thanks for listening, guys. I hope this touched somebody today. I'm going to be honest, this is very difficult for me every episode to do because it's against my own desires and I know it's right and I know that's what God wants me to do. And I'm going to keep sharing and giving anything that I have that I receive from God and any wisdom and love and, and, and insight and encouragement that I have. And I'm going to just give it all to you guys. Okay, so we're in it together. It's very tough. Life is very tough. Don't let anybody tell you, oh, you know, suck it up. No, 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 no. Do your best. If you got to cry, cry. If you got to rest, if you got to take a break, if you have to have a really slow weekend sometimes and not have, be with family or whatever, slow down. Just take it easy. We're not here to please people. But follow God. Listen to his voice. Know that he's got you. And you're exactly where you need to be. God bless you and I love you. Take care.